This is Wonder Kids, a SciTech podcast where you send in your big science questions and the amazing SciTech staff find the answers. My name is Rose, and I've been thinking about ink because of a question sent in by Isaac. Hi, my name is Isaac, and I was wondering who invented the pen? And to answer that question, we have Shani joining us today. Hi Isaac, my name is Shani and I'm one of the presenters at SciTech and I just love learning about invention. To answer this question, we first need to travel back several thousand years to the time of the ancient Egyptians. Back then, the scribes who wrote everything down used pens made from reeds that grew by the Nile River. The reed pen had one pointy end and a thin slit cut down its centre. When the reed pen was dipped in ink, the ink would be drawn up into the slit through capillary action. Capillary action is the natural ability of liquids to flow into small holes without help from, and sometimes even opposing, external forces like gravity. Once the ink was drawn up into the slit, the scribes wrote by squeezing the reed pen to release the ink. Next came quill pens, the type you often see in Harry Potter movies. These were made from the long wing feathers of birds like swans, turkeys and geese. First the feathers were dried and then gently heated to remove all the oils and fats that might mix and interfere with the ink. To write with quill pens you dip them in an inkwell and the thin slit in the middle would draw up ink using capillary action, like the reed pens used by the ancient Egyptians. Just like modern pencils, quill pens had to be constantly sharpened, which meant that once your quill was too short, you had to replace it. That's why inventors began working on a longer lasting pen with a metal nib. Metal nib pens have a metal point with a fine slip that's dipped in ink, just like quills. Several inventors were working on metal pens at the time, but in 1822, John Mitchell invented a machine that mass-produced steel point pens. Unlike quill pens, you didn't need to constantly sharpen steel point pens, so they lasted much longer. However, you still needed to dip steel point pens in ink, so inventors began trying to find ways to store the ink inside the pen. So just like metal nib pens, several inventors set about trying to create what we now know as the fountain pen, which has its own container of ink inside it. Like all inventions, the first few versions of the fountain pen had a few problems, like how do you refill the ink? But with every new design, the pen got better and better. And in 1884, American inventor L.E. Waterman created a fountain pen that became very popular because it always had easy, free-flowing ink. He did this by making an extra hole in the pen, which allowed air from the outside to fill any empty space that was created as the ink was used up. The air inside the pen helped push the ink towards the pen point, resulting in a pen that was very easy to write with. Fountain pens were very popular until the ballpoint pen came along. This is the pen you would be most familiar with. Just like the fountain pen, it took many tries over many decades to get the ballpoint pen right. In the 1930s, Hungarian journalist Laszlo Biro teamed up with his chemist brother, Georg. Together, they created a pen with a small ball that could freely roll around at the bottom. As the ball rolled, it would pick up ink from the internal container and transfer it to the paper. The next time you pick up a pen, take a careful look. You should be able to see a tiny metal ball at the pointy end. That's where they're called ballpoint pens. The name Biro probably sounds familiar because the word biro, commonly used to describe ballpoint pens, comes from the name of its inventor, Biro. Minor adjustments were made to ballpoint pens over the 20th century, including gel pens, rollerball pens, and my new favourite, erasable pens. Oh, so it wasn't just one person who invented the pen. Exactly. Pens have slowly improved over thousands of years as we learnt more and more about science and technology. The inventors kept finding new ways to solve problems, because as long as humans can find a problem, we'll never stop working on a better solution. That's really cool. Thanks, Shani. What kind of pens do you have at home? Are they different from each other? Can you figure out how they work by looking at them? Thanks for listening to Wonder Kids. This podcast is brought to you by SciTech. Explore your world through wonder.